In the previous video, we showed how to verify that we are dealing with a valid joint PDF. We have shown that we need to check that two conditions are met, namely the function is positive, and the second condition was is that uh, the double integral of this joint PDF sums up to one. Okay, so visually, for the second condition, we need to uh, verify by solving this double integral that the volume under the surface is actually summing up to one. Joint PDF contains all the information we ever wanted to know about the underlying variables. We can extract many useful things out of the PDF. We can, for instance, check for uh, the independence of the two variables. We can derive marginal probability density function. We can uh, derive the joint distribution function. We can find out conditional probability densities, conditional expectations, conditional variances. And last but not least, we can find the expected value of the product of the two random variables. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is how do we check that the two random variables are independent? But before we prove mathematically that these two variables are independent, let's think about the intuition of what uh, we are trying to achieve here. Um, our joint PDF is modeling time it takes to the next croc attack in Australia versus time it takes to the next shark attack in Egypt. Okay, so given that Australia and Egypt are so far away uh, uh, from each other, two distinct continents, yeah, and two distinct species, um, intuition behind it is that it would be very, very implausible that uh, to some extent the, sh the timings of sharks attacks in Egypt are in any way influencing or are related to the croc attacks in Australia. Therefore, purely looking at our scenario, I don't believe that there is any that there's any dependence between these two variables. Of course, to prove uh, independence mathematically, we need to prove that x and y's joint distribution can be factorized as a product of their marginal functions. The problem, of course, is what is the marginal distribution? Well, marginal distribution is the distribution of this variable, of one of these variables alone in isolation away from the uh, joint density function that we are given here. So for instance, the timings to the next fatal croc attack would be distributed like this, i.e. exponentially. And we see that this function is has only one single variable. So we are moving from the 3D three-dimensional um, context into a two-dimensional um, representation. And of course this is a single variable PDF probability density function. It just shows the relative probability with which the timings to the next fatal croc attack um, are distributed. For instance, it shows that it's more likely for a fatal uh, croc attack to happen um, in the first year or at year equal to 1 than it is somewhere here at year equal to 2. Okay, so far so good. We managed to understand uh, the definition of the marginal density function, but now to prove independence we need to prove that the joint PDF here uh, can be represented as a product of two marginal density functions. And how do we find these marginal density functions uh, mathematically? Well, we have to solve some integral. Okay, f of x can be found um, by taking the integral from infinite, from negative infinity to positive infinity of this joint PDF with respect to y, and f of y can be found by exactly the same method, except for we have to integrate with respect to, to x. Okay, so let's uh, find out right now if we can indeed represent our joint PDF in terms of a product of two um, marginal densities. Maybe first of all, a quick reminder of some exponential properties. What happens to e to x when x tends to minus infinity? Well, it tends to zero. 
what happens when um, x is 0? Well, e to 0 is 1. Okay, so let's um, try to solve for our first marginal density function, i.e. the function that was modeling the time to the next croc attack. Okay, all I've done here is just copied uh, the stuff from the uh, red box and now you notice that I changed the lower limit of integration. The reason why I've done this is because our variables are defined, x and y are defined uh, for uh, values greater than zero. Okay, and here we can break down this expression um, as a product of two exponential functions. And because we are integrating with respect to y, I move this e to x in front of this integ integral. Okay, so uh, here we are just evaluating this expression from infinity to n to to zero. Yeah. So from infinity, what happens to e to minus y when y tends to infinity? Well, this whole power is tending to minus infinity. Therefore, the whole expression is tending to zero. From, proper, from this property here, okay? And then what happens when we substitute the lower limit of integration in, in the, into this expression? Well, it, it will be 1, okay? It will become 1. So we recovered our first marginal density function. When it comes, when it comes to uh, f of y, it's exactly the same procedure, except for we have to change uh, the variable of integration it becomes x okay it's always the opposite of the function of the variable that you want to recover so you want to recover f of y integrate with respect to x you want to recover f of x integrate with respect to y okay and finally we are ready to answer the question are our x and y variables independent? Of course, intuitively it made sense. How about mathematically? Well, they are independent if our joint PDF can be expressed as a product of two marginal functions of x and y alone. And guess what? We recovered these marginal functions here and here. And when we substitute them, it turns out that it gives us exactly the same expression as our joint PDF. Therefore, we have proven that our variables are indeed independent.